How's it going, Eliminators? In today's video, we're going to be working on a Canadiana CS826 and CN523 snowblower. The Canadiana, Noma, and also the Murray brand is now owned by Briggs & Stratton. These are really old Canadian-made models, and there's not a lot of information available on these units, so I just wanted to make this video to help get some information out there. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So I have a Canadiana CS826 snowblower here and what a hard time I had finding belts for this thing. My customer smoked both the auger and the drive belt and as far as I could tell there's absolutely zero information for this machine online. I ended up calling Briggs & Stratton who owns the rights now to the Canadiana, the Noma and the Murray brand of snowblowers and basically they had to use what's known as a micro fish and it's just like this little card that they put under a projector. They ended up giving me some information on what they thought could be belt sizes, but turns out they were completely different belts, believe it or not. But uh, no big deal because what I've done is essentially just taken a whole bunch of belts that I had in my inventory and I kind of figured out what was too long and what was too short. And then eventually you can kind of narrow yourself down to where I'm at now. So for the auger here, I ended up going with a half by 38 and it's perfect. So when you turn the engine over, the crankshaft from the engine here spins freely and the pulley does not engage the auger belt. There's all kinds of slack on it now because you have to come up to the control lever and when I push that down, you're gonna see it engages the auger. So now when I turn the engine over, that auger belt is nice and tight. And then there are belt keepers that come out of the engine block there and that'll just prevent the belt from slipping off there. And then as you saw, you know, I turned over the engine and the drive belt did not spin. So then when you come up to the lever up here, this one engages the drive idler right there. See that on a cable and there's its own drive tension spring there. So now with it engaged, you turn that over and it spins. So everything now is working as it should. And this turned out to be a half by 30 inch belt. I tried a half by 29 and it was too tight and a half by 31 was slipping when it was engaged. So a half by 30 is perfect. The only other modification that I did was I went to the other side of the machine there and I had to drill a hole to bring the auger tension spring for the idler arm slightly over because the spring was hitting the auger belt, which is what could have caused that to fail. That is the rest of the auger belt, believe it or not. So basically I just wanted to bring that spring as far away from the new auger belt as I could there. And uh, that looks pretty good. So this is where the spring used to hook up to. And I just drilled an eighth inch hole there to run the spring through there. So plenty of room now, and it's kind of running straight. You don't want your springs coming in contact with anything that they're not supposed to. So same thing here, this has a, a nice little spacing there. And that should be good. My customer said this thing ran and it was throwing snow until he smoked that belt. And I'll show you what the drive belt looked like. So I have the old drive belt here. Check this thing out guys. That thing definitely needed to be replaced. Luckily though, I was able to get a measurement off of this. You know, didn't know whether or not it had stretched a little bit. Generally nine times out of 10, belts aren't super stretched. A lot of guys say they don't stretch, but sometimes you'll get maybe like a, a quarter or even a half inch longer reading. This ended up measuring half by 30. So I had something to go off of. And like I said, I tried using that 29 and it was just a little bit too tight. The 31 was too long, so I split the difference. So you guys can see here, half by 29. This is an old belt that I would have taken off of something. Now, I have this hanging up on my shelf. However, I wouldn't sell this to a customer because it is a used belt. But you wanna keep some of this stuff because it comes in handy when you have to do a job that I'm doing right now, which is trying to identify a belt length on a machine that you cannot find information for. So if we come down to the model sticker, or at least what's left of it, you guys can maybe make out Canadiana and it says CS826 so it's an 8 horsepower 26 inch snowblower underneath it it has a 6019 and then off to the right I believe it says CHS-8 something something but 
you can't read it anymore. And you guys can see, I got the vernier caliper out, I got the drill bits out, so this is kind of the stuff you gotta do. And I also have a seamstress's tape measure here. So you lay this on the belt on the outside there, and then you walk it all the way around to get your length because even though a manufacturer is gonna say that is the belt size, it can always be maybe a quarter or even sometimes a half inch out of spec, depending on whether it's an OEM or an aftermarket belt. So you can always measure your belts and then now you might have some in-between sizes that you can play around with. In any case though, my customer wanted a full service on this thing. The pull start on this, oddly enough, was rotated to the point where it came out on the bottom left. So all I did was undo the four bolts there and uh, spun the recoil around. So at least now it's coming out of the top right. So you can kind of grab it like this. It's a little bit easier to pull versus, you know, grabbing it from down there and kind of pulling it this way. That was a little weird, I thought. So the recoil must have had some work done to it at some point. But my customer said he got this free when he bought his house. He says it runs, it drives, and uh, he just wanted some new belts. He also said that he heard some noises coming from the gearbox and he wanted me to check it out. Turns out it was just a bunch of stones in the second stage. So what I did was I tilted it up and I spun the auger impeller back there, the pulley, around and all the little stones fell out. So I could only assume that he has a gravel driveway. This is just one of the repairs that I'm doing. We're kind of swamped with snow blowers. And I just wanted to, you know, maybe do a little video here to uh, show you guys some of the stuff we do. But yeah, a little bit of lubrication on all of these cables and this thing should be good to go. And before I change the oil on this thing, I'm going to flip it up so I can show you guys the underside because this doesn't have a hex shaft with a friction wheel that a normal newer snowblower would have. This unit actually has, I believe, a five-speed transmission with a neutral and a reverse. So you can see here, this is the shift lever. And on this one in particular, it says reverses back here. And then I believe this is the N for neutral. And all of these gears up here are going to be numbered so you would have something like reverse, neutral, and then you would have first, second, third, and fourth. But I can put a picture up on screen to show you guys what another Canadiana CS826 looked like. And you could see that the neutral is actually in this position here and then reverses back here. And all of these speeds are going to be one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm not too sure if this one's a four speed or a five speed, but I'll get this unit flipped up and show you the underside. So with the snowblower flipped up, this is what the underside looks like. This whole area was filled with belt particles and all kinds of nasty stuff from the auger belt smoking and also the drive belt coming apart. But you guys are gonna notice two different things that snowblowers today do not have. One is going to be the very large transmission. So unlike the friction plate that you would have that would come in contact with a rubber friction wheel and then drive your wheels, you have a drive pulley down here that goes to this transmission. That transmission has different speeds that you can set as I showed you on the console and that then powers a shaft with a sprocket gear reduction here with a chain drive down to the axle. But check this thing out, very different from snowblowers of today. This unit has a differential. So the cool thing about this unit is you can actually lock up one wheel and the other wheel will keep spinning. And then again, you can turn both wheels at the same time. This is a differential just like what your car or your truck has and you definitely don't see anything like this on today's units. This for 1982 would have been top of the line. I'm pretty sure this is a 1982 CS 826. I could be wrong, but like I said, for back then, this thing was incredibly well built and was meant to last. All right, so my buddy had this copper wire kind of rigged around the throttle lever here. So for now, I just put this spring here. So there's your stop position, and then it'll always return to high speed. And then here's the choke lever here. So I'll, at least I'll be able to start it, and it'll be on a higher RPM to run. All right, so choke is on full, throttle is on. See if we can get this thing to start. First full. Big 
disengaged right now, so that's not good. Well, my shutoff switch works. This whole heat shield is a little loose, but a couple bolts can solve that. But now that the engine's been run, the oil is hot, so I'll take that into the garage, drain that out. Check this out though. Belt keepers, this one for the impeller or auger belt comes off of this side and we got a lot of slack on that side. And then this one was there. Now I just put them back the way that they came off. So I think what I'm gonna do is switch these so that I can bring the belt in here a little bit because you have to remember that the belt turns this way. So if I can create some slack up here with the belt keeper holding it in like that, it's possible that the belt won't grab. So you gotta keep in mind it can't be too tight but with the auger disengaged, if I pull the engine over, it's not grabbing. And like I said, I'll run the drive belt keeper on this side and it'll kind of keep it like that. See how much slack that one has. But the half by 30 worked awesome because I put this thing into drive and I leaned back and I was pulling on the handles and it was pulling me pretty hard. So that half by 30 has tons of grip once it's engaged. The trick though, at least for that one there, the auger, is going to be that when the belt is engaged, you don't want that touching. So I might bend that out just a little bit more so that we don't smoke the back side. But when it's released, it doesn't matter if it touches a bit. So like I said, with it disengaged, it's touching the belt, hopefully pushing this top section up. See that? So we have enough play here that the crankshaft pulley should be able to spin without engaging the impeller. And then when we engage this, you guys can see now there's tons of room, so we're not gonna smoke that. And then as for this one, I know it doesn't really look all that fancy. I really don't know what I'm gonna do about that one because it really doesn't seem like it's the right keeper for any of these. I mean, it fits weird over there in here, but you know, I might be able to run it down here, but then it was kind of coming in contact over here and I want to keep it away from this. So yeah, just going to see if this works for now. really cool thing about this differential is how easy it makes to move this thing around and turn it so that works pretty good we got a couple extra shear bolts just taped up to the engine there for now because we ended up replacing the shear bolts there put some stens double zero grease into the gearbox this is all the stuff that i scraped out of the bottom access panel plate there that was from the old belts some white lithium grease on all the pivot points ended up getting the belt guard back on because again with that little adjustment to the keeper and swapping them around now the half by 38 auger belt works perfectly got a whole bunch of gas seeping out of here because i had this thing flipped up you don't want your fuel to come out of your cap because on these old ones you have the vents then you just take the cap off put a ziploc bag down and then tighten that up still leaks a bit but at least it won't drip out all over the place and yeah this thing runs drives it's a little easier to start now and my buddy should be quite pleased to get this thing back fully operational so a cool follow-up to the first part of this video i ended up getting this snowblower into the shop here this is also a canadiana again made by noma so canadiana noma and the murray brands are now owned by briggs and stratton and as i said information was exceptionally hard to find on these models even after calling the local Briggs & Stratton parts distributor here in Ontario, Canada, which is PowerSource, they had very limited information on these and could not find any belt information that was correct for the CS826 or for the CN523, which is this model here. So it's a five horsepower, 23 inch snowblower, and I had to do an auger belt on this one. Now the work's already been completed on this, but for the Canadiana CN523 snowblower, the belt that we used was a Stenz Aramid or Kevlar belt replacement, and it was a 248-030, which is going to be a half by 30 inch belt. So what we did was when we installed it, we just slid the idler pulley for the auger or the impeller 
all the way out and that thing worked perfect. So when you turn over the engine and the pulley spins and the belt does not engage and then when you engage it, it's nice and tight. As for the drive belt, this one was in perfect condition. I can put some photos up on screen. He ended up having the crankcase vent tube venting to the back of the belt cover, which led to a bunch of oil getting on the drive pulley. So he did have a drive belt slippage issue that basically I just fixed. I took the belt off, wiped it down, used some brake cleaner on the pulley there, and we were able to fix that up. His drive belt was in perfect condition, so I didn't want to replace it, but the belt number for the drive belt was a Canadiana or a Noma or a Murray 53790. So that's the part number for the drive belt. I'm sure you'd be able to find one on, you know, Google, eBay, Amazon, and whatnot. But this thing fires right up. It runs, and just like all the other snowblowers that I've been working on, we're getting them out as soon as we can. Well, that's going to wrap up today's video. Like I said, kind of a thrown together video. We're super swamped here. There was a big snowstorm and we had a ton of snowblowers come into the shop for service, just one after the other nonstop. But these units did come in. And like I said, I had a difficult time finding any information on these units. So I wanted to do this video just to get the information out there on the belt lengths that did work so that you guys could go and install some yourself. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.